not bad. Not bad at all. I messed up though. I read some stuff wrong because uh, what we don't have is full hookups here. $24 a night plus tax only gives you power. They got a 30 amp, uh, no water on site, no dump station. Although they do have that facility on the way out, you can top off your tank, but everybody here, and they've got over 300 sites, everybody here has to use the water they brought with them and their water pump. So it's not unlimited water. Obviously I can't wash the RV. And I had to stop there first to fill up the tank and then I will top it off in two days. If I even stay two days because absolutely no service and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to upload a video. Uh, yesterday's, well the video that you guys would have watched two days prior. Uh, so I gotta figure that out. I can go up to their little place up there and sit there all day and see if I can upload a video but I don't know if it's gonna work. One of the cool things about the site that I'm at is, is that we get a view of Lake Ontario here. I'm not sure why they didn't utilize all this open space here for more campgrounds by the lake, unless it has something to do with back home where uh, the states just stop allowing people to camp on the lake because some people abuse it. But I think that's pretty much as close as you can camp, so we'll, we'll check it out. And I'm not totally bummed. There is a laundry facility that takes uh, quarters up front. So I will right get on my bike, take my laundry up there, take care of that. Um, I just don't have the unlimited water and uh, I don't know what to do about no cell service and no Wi-Fi because I'm on the road, my job, my YouTube channel, interacting with people depends on me staying connected and I booked two nights here. So, and no refunds. So, I'm gonna figure that one out. But there you've got Lake Ontario. On the other side of that, out in the haze, I can kind of see Canada over there. Not bad. That says Lake Ontario facts and figures. Lake Ontario is 193 miles long. Wow. Also, one of the cool things about uh, the way the sun is going to set is uh, if you see it's over here, it's going to come over the water a little bit. And I may bring my chair down later and do a little time lapse of this area. Um, over on this side though, it smells horrible. This algae, murky, swamp looking thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's unpleasant. But oh man, I'm happy to be here. Oh yeah. I'm on the bike. <clears throat> I have an update about drinking water. I asked my neighbors and they said, well, there's like six of them around the campground. I'm gonna go find one right now. I'm gonna drive through these campsites right here, something I wouldn't normally do if there was anybody occupied in them, but because they're all empty, it's okay. Uh, see this thing right here? I think this is one of those six water stations that they were telling me about. Yep. So right there, you've got a spigot with a blue handle. That is drinking water. And I think what most people are doing is just parking here near the road or something and then uh, filling up their RV. I've seen a couple people grab some bigger, like five or seven gallon buckets and just carry it back. But yeah, I would say just when you get here, find one of these stations right here, fill up all your fresh water and you're good to go. Now I'm going back to the office now just to look for the dump station. Okay, I found the dump station. So they got uh, two of them on the way out, but obviously on busy days, these are probably both gonna be pretty full. When I was going through one of the campgrounds in Georgia earlier this uh, winter, spring, I think I w ended up waiting almost two and a half hours for my turn to do this. I was in and out in 10 minutes. Oh, apparently there is a laundry restroom shower thing like right down from my site. So now we're going back to my spot to find this mystery laundry room. Okay, it's right here. That was pretty easy. Uh, one of them got an order, one of them in use, and then two washers over here. 
dollar seventy five for that. Dollar fifty to get the washer with the dryer going. Cool. Now I'm gonna go in here and look at the bathrooms real quick just to share with everybody. Just so you can see. Fairly clean. Not bad. I like to share a little bit more of the campground sometimes because a lot of people might be like interested in something, so they will search on YouTube specifically for Mile Creek State Campground. And then when well, you know my video pops up and they're like, what? He didn't even go and show us what this looks like. What kind of tour is this? Not realizing that my videos aren't about tours. My videos are about day-to-day -day life. So, but still, I showed him. Now I'm going to go gather up all my dirty laundry, do a couple loads, get caught up. And actually, I'm feeling a lot better about this place. I've gotten everything figured out. Not everything is convenient, but i got everything figured out. And the only thing I don't have is internet and phone service which is okay. I just can't reply to my friends and viewers on YouTube for a couple days on the last video that you, that you just saw. All right, cool. Uh, laundry's in there. Didn't film it, didn't want to bore you, but that guy's. And one other thing I didn't film and I want to show you is I took apart, I took the faceplate of my AC off of two screws here, take the two knobs off, slide it forward, take this off, and then I cleaned off. I went outside, rinsed these off, and cleaned out these we're both just caked with uh, cat hair and dust uh, because I have a cat in here and it sucks it in the air and then wants to cool it. So I feel like it's getting a lot more airflow with the cold air blowing through here. So that's really cool. Um, let's see. I also looked at the rules for the park. Two things I want to mention. Very first rule, no RC drone flying. It's great when they actually say it that way you don't wonder if it's allowed and I don't have to go up and ask. It's just pretty much national parks and almost every state park I've been to. Absolutely not. The most amazing places that I want to do it. Nope, not legal or not allowed, so no biggie. But nowhere on there does it say anything about RV or car washing prohibited. Then again, with that said, each site does not have their own water, so you're not going to see it a whole lot. I would never drive up and just park in the road and wash my RV, but I might have an idea, and I will share something with you later when the sun goes down. We'll see. Was the plan here just to sleep all day then, Jax? Catman. Jax Catman. Are you just going to sleep then? You want to go outside? You want to eat some grass? Yeah. Doesn't get much better than this. I went with the Samuel Adams variety pack. Doing October, Oktoberfest now. Got something that tasted like a campfire later. Got the camera set up for time lapse on Lake Ontario. Look at that view. I know, spoiled rotten. guy. Morning everybody. I did my uh, copy this morning with the uh, French press. Something I, I may do a little more often. Sometimes firing up the generator is just a buzz kill in the morning because it's so loud. Uh, it's easy. Makes me not drink quite as much coffee. Meow. Meow meow meow. Okay buddy. You want to try some? Yeah. Uh, morning sun feels good, huh? Oh, it feels good. Okay, now this is just for fun. I do not know if this is going to work, but I am going to try something very funky and we'll just do a trial and error, see if it works. I'm gonna remove the aerator here from my bathroom sink and I'm going to install this guy here, which has a regular uh, three quarter inch threaded on the bottom that will accept a normal garden hose attachment. attach my regular uh, water hose that I use for filling up water here. There we go. Alright, I'll attach this guy, then I'll go back inside and turn on the sink and let this hose get pressurized and see what we can get out of it. Alright, water pump turned off. Here we go, let's see. I mean, technically, it'll work. It's not high pressure. I don't even know what water pump I have currently in the RV, 
it might even be one of the originals, but it works. I haven't replaced it yet. Don't know how many gallons per minute it pushes. That's not the best, but you know what? This will work so that I can wash my RV anywhere on the road with my own water on board. That's what I'm gonna do. Everybody, that's going to be the extent of my uh, day here. I've got some laundry still to fold from last night, and um, let's see a couple things I want to show you. One is um, I did get a magnet at the Niagara Falls. I want to add that at least show you which one I got. There it is, right there, Niagara Falls. There's my Multnomah Falls one from Oregon. Kind of looks similar, but yeah, pretty soon I'll be wrapping these magnets uh, pretty much all the way around my vent cap here. And then over here, um, I printed out and uh, framed a few of the articles. This one from 96.5 The Fox uh, radio station. Got the Lost Post Outcoast one from California. And of course, my Bismarck Tribune article. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with them or where I'm going to display them just yet, but I thought it would be a kind of a cool idea to at least protect them and keep them because it's pretty cool. Oh no, it's always good to be in the paper for something good rather than bad, right? <laughs> anyway, guys, have a great day. Jackson and I will see you guys in a couple days. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks guys.